could work on a method called Action Bank, which is a mid or mid and or high level representation for activity or human activity in video to solve activity recognition problems. At least that's what he's focused on. Uh, this is, I guess, uh, do, important to note that this is the first public disclosure of Action Bank, which the university has decided to file up for a provisional patent um, last Friday. Uh, we're seeking full patent and licensing and so on. So this is work that's not only new, good, but also industrially practical. Okay, so I think Anant will hopefully give us a good talk. Thank you, Professor. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Sriman Anand Sadanan. And uh, today I'm here to make my thesis defense on my topic titled Action Bank, a high-level representation of human activity in video. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here. I know it's a little depressing sitting through someone's thesis defense right after lunch, a nice day like this, but I promise I'll make this as interesting and uh, comprehensive as possible. A uh, little bit of an introduction about myself. I've been a grad student at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering since the fall of 2009, and uh, I've worked closely with Dr. Corso on this subject uh, for the past 12 months. Uh, my work, for the most of it, uh, generally involved, I mean, uh, is in the field of computer vision, and uh, to be a little specific, I am trying to tackle one specific aspect of computer vision called activity recognition. Now, having said this, I'd like to start my talk today by uh, giving you a very brief overview of what we'll be covering through my talk. Uh, since my topic uh, relates with activity recognition, I'm going to start my presentation with describing a few aspects about machine uh, recognition of activities, uh, describing why it's challenging and why it's all the more important. Uh, next, we'll quickly go through some of the related work in this field, uh, which is usually adopted by uh, researchers in the computer vision community. And uh, we will eventually see why there is a need of a different methodology uh, to be implemented in the field of activity recognition. And that's, that sets the stage for the concept of Action Bank. Uh, for the next 20-30 uh, minutes, uh, once we reach that stage, I will be speaking about the specifics of Action Bank, how it works. Uh, and you know how technically efficient it is and uh, finally we'll be looking at some of the results and experiments that uh, we, we performed with this method. So to begin with, activity recognition is a pretty self-explanatory term. It means you're trying to recognize activities but my work relates with the machine level recognition of activities. There is a difference between the way we recognize actions and the way machines recognize actions. Now, activity recognition in, inherently is, is a difficult concept to be done or to be implemented by machines. And I list a few reasons why uh, machine level activity recognition is challenging. Number one is human actions inherently are complex. <coughs> now, we have many different ways of doing the same things. There are many different things that we can do, many different actions that we can perform. The activity space is extremely large. And because of inherent complexity, it becomes difficult to categorize any particular action as belonging to one particular, one particular class or the other. And that is one aspect that makes machine recognition of activities a little contrived. Another example, another reason why machine activity recognition is a little complex is because human action or human beings have a lot of degrees of freedom in terms of activity capabilities. Like we have 208 bones in our bodies and about 230 joints in them. So the number of different ways we can manipulate our body is, is immense. Like, like this guy, like frankly speaking, he creeps me out a little bit. Like the number of freedoms that oh, he has no, of, there's no bones in his body. <laughs> I, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that is the case. But the point that I'm trying to convey here is just because of the flexibility that we have, again, it's very difficult to categorize a range of activities as belonging to a particular class or not. Another reason why uh, recognition is a little difficult is because human actions are very view-specific. By view-specific, I mean the same activity looked at from different points of views could probably look very different, and that's evident by this example. You have four examples of people playing basketball, and then again, you should know that it's easy for us to recognize that each of these are you know, basketball-related videos, but for a machine to do that, it's a little more, it's a little more complex. And uh, finally, every action has a different way of being performed by different people. We all have our own styles, we, have all, we all have our own methods of doing the same thing. 
and the same action could look you know surprisingly different when different people perform it so these are some of the reasons why activity recognition is a little challenging why is it even relevant why is activity recognition even being pursued as a field of research by the computer vision community let's look at some of the applications that activity recognition has in in the present day uh, on the top left example uh, we have a uh, typical application related to action spotting now i'm sure we all might have spent a lot of time sometimes in our life looking for a particular occurrence of an action in a longer video what if we could have a machine to do that automatically we will be talking more about this method in in upcoming slides the next two examples on the top right are basic surveillance related applications <coughs> like i'm not sure if you can see the boxes that are drawn around the people but those boxes are machine generated and uh, so is the case with the example on the right and this opens up a large number of possibilities where act activity recognition can be used for surveillance related applications the second row is by far my favorite a couple of years back we all saw the movie minority report and we see tom cruise you know using this super cool ui thingy now 7 years ago that was about 4.5 million dollars of lot of you know really sophisticated cgi but today it's about 150 dollars of something called as a microsoft connect that we get that we get in the market outside on the right we see this guy who's sitting in his room implementing a simple fingertip recognition algorithm using the microsoft connect and he's doing exactly what tom cruise is doing in this example just to give you a very brief sense of the number of ways or the number of areas in which activity recognition as a whole can be applied on the last row we have a clip from a popular movie avatar and uh, it's not exactly uh, computer vision i mean machine activity recognition it's more of motion capture but i think it conveys the message as to how important activity recognition is uh, in today's world now having looked at that i'd like to quickly browse through some of the most common methods that are being used in the community uh, for performing activity recognition uh, there are a lot of methods out there which are interest points based detection methods now it's pretty evident from the video what an interest point based uh, detection method is uh, in a 3d volume uh, interest points are generated or interest points are detected and a model is learned over those interest points to try to classify what uh, what activity can be occurring over there now uh, these are this is this is a good method but the problem with this is it tends to fail where there are a lot of lighting artifacts in videos like for example you see that the shadow of the car also uh, generates a few, a few interest points they are erroneous i mean they are incorrect interest points like as the car starts moving you'll see interest points on the shadow and that's that's one of the primary drawbacks of interest points based interest points based detection methods <clears throat> another type of uh, recognition method i mean a general class of recognition method out there uh, is called body i mean it's based on body part tracking based detections so what exactly happens here is instead of directly trying to look at trajectory of points in the video we first try to localize parts of the body localize different parts of the body and try to learn a model on the trajectories of those parts of the of those body parts now this method works relatively well but it's based on the fundamental fact that you should be able to localize human body parts and if for, if for some reason you are unable to do that then this method will fail uh finally one of the methods uh another type of methods of recognition that's uh you know out there in uh, uh, being used by a lot of people are is i mean it comes under the realm of uh, template based uh, detections here basically what happens is let's say this is uh, an action sequence of a guy doing a particular action now what the, the method involves making a three dimensional template or a two dimensional template whatever it involves making a template of the action so this template can be considered as a mold for the action and every subsequent uh, act activity of interest to be classified is compared with this mold and then uh, classification take recognition takes place now the problem with this i mean this is relatively a better method as compared to previous ones but the problems related to the, this is it's a dense feature based method so dense features includes uh, you know increase in computation and uh, uh, com uh, complexity now each of these three types of methods are in their own uh, in their own sense pretty effective methods but the fundamental i wouldn't really say flaw but the fundamental caveat in each of those three methods 
is they they are based primarily on low level features by low level features i mean let's say when we spoke about interest point detection or we spoke about localizing body parts based detection the ultimate features that are used for recognition are low level trajectories of of specific